Hello, Oracles. Well, Tesla had another record quarter, but they missed expectations. So what does that mean going forward? Well, Tesla came in with 405,000 deliveries and 439,000 vehicles getting produced. These two numbers here are the first time Tesla has ever achieved 400,000 of either in one quarter. It took Tesla 10 years to reach 400,000 deliveries just in a single year. Now they have done it in a single quarter. However, expectations were 418,000 deliveries and they fell short. So taking a look at the report that Tesla put out, in the fourth quarter, we produced over 439,000 vehicles and delivered over 405,000 vehicles. In 2022, vehicle deliveries grew 40% year over year to 1.31 million, while production grew 47% year over year to 1.37 million. We continue to transition towards a more even regional mix of vehicle builds, which again led to a further increase in cars in transit at the end of the quarter. You guys remember this is what they stated at the end of the third quarter because they're trying to smooth out the delivery waves. Thank you to all of our customers, employees, suppliers, shareholders, and supporters who helped us achieve a great 2022 in light of significant COVID and supply chain related challenges throughout the year. So looking at the numbers here, as we can see, Model S and X production was 20,613, deliveries were 17,147, the 3 and the Y, 419,088 for production, and 388,131 for deliveries, for that total of 439,701 and 405,278 for production and deliveries, respectively. In 2022 overall, the S and the X had 71,177 vehicles produced and 66,705 delivered. With the 3 and the Y, they produced 1,298,434 and delivered 1,247,146. And this comes down to a total of 1,369,611 produced and 1,313,851 deliveries. So the discrepancy of about 56,000 vehicles there could be some that were left in inventory, some that are in transit. They don't break down specifically anywhere in here saying how many are in transit anywhere. So we'll have to figure that out as time goes on. But again, this is what we saw at the end of Q3. This kind of rolled us into Q4. We're now seeing that same thing transpiring going into Q1 of 2023. So they continue on with Tesla will post its financial results for the fourth quarter and full year ended December 31st, 2022 after market close on Wednesday, January 25th, 2023. This is the date that we have been talking about and suspecting. They have now confirmed that. At that time, Tesla will issue a brief advisory containing a link to the Q4 and full year 2022 update, which will be available on Tesla's investor relations website. Tesla management will hold a live question and answer webcast that day at 4.30 p.m. Central Time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time to discuss the company's financial and business results and outlook. And so I will be doing a live stream for when we have earnings just to be able to go over all of that and show you guys. So what does all of this mean? So I'm going to dive into a chart that kind of shows the bigger picture that James Stevenson had put out, looking at the fact that it was still a record quarter. Again, this is phenomenal growth. Quarter over quarter, they grew 18% for deliveries. My delivery forecast was way off. I was in at 430,000. That missed by 6.1%. Probably my worst performance to date. However, on the production side of things, I only missed by 1.5%. Not the best of numbers for me, but I was definitely very close. So I will take that. Production is much easier to forecast than deliveries, just especially now with the delivery waves. Troy Teslake himself said that, you know, he was usually pretty conservative, but he was a little on the higher end this time, missing deliveries by 2.2%. Even Troy is trying to figure out this smoothing out of the waves as we go forward, trying to get that balanced out. And now, as we can see here in this chart, for anyone who is concerned by this quarterly miss of expectations, this is the growth that we have seen over the course of Tesla's history. From 2013 through 2022, this is what the chart of growth has looked like. So if you are concerned at all, please take a step back and look at the bigger picture and see where we are truly headed right now. Now, as we can see here, James says, Tesla's unit sales compound annual growth rate since 2020 exceeds 62%. So now I did ask James, I'm waiting for his answer back 
to see what Tesla would need from here through 2030 to achieve an average of 50% annual growth. So this is what I'm waiting on. But looking at this here, this is what Elon talks about is some years are going to be over, some years are going to be under. Currently, on an average, we are exceeding 62%. So with that said, hitting a 40% this year just brings that down a little bit. So where do we go from here? Well, we know that we're already facing headwinds when it comes to the EV tax credit here in 2023. It does look like, based upon information that I had seen, I went there to look to see what the Model Y lead time is. It now shows January to March of 2023. That is definitely longer than what we had previously, which was just until the end of December. Perhaps Tesla was doing that to really encourage people to take their deliveries now because they could get them right away. Don't know for sure. We will wait and see. I'm getting information that it looks like the seven seat qualifications don't kick in until April. Uh, I need to get some clarification on this. As far as I saw with the EV tax credit, everything went into effect right after the first of the year. So we've got a lot of people out there talking about how Tesla's getting screwed. We've got a lot of uproar going on in the community. So I've been kind of on both sides of the fence with this. For me personally, initially, I was like, Tesla's getting screwed. Look at this. Why would that even matter, whether it's five or seven seat? Everything else about the vehicle, especially when it comes to what the credit is for, is exactly the same. Meanwhile, other vehicles like the Audi ID4 is getting that higher limit of the 80,000. Then we see the Ford Mach-E and the Cadillac Lyric coming out also being dropped down to the $55,000 level. So then I thought about it, I'm like, well, it looks like hybrids are kind of given the higher level. Meanwhile, pure EVs are given the lower level. Now, to me, that doesn't make sense. You think that if you're really trying to push for pure EVs, then you would have it completely reversed. But then my mentality kicked in about the consumer standpoint thinking, well, if they do it this way, consumers, especially going into a recession, are more apt to be buying that lower priced vehicle, thereby incentivizing the EVs even more. Sure, it's not going to be easy for the producers of these vehicles because they're going to have to take price cuts in order to sell those. So from a financial standpoint for the company, not great, but from the consumer standpoint, this is awesome. And in turn, is going to end up flipping over that price parity even faster for ICE and hybrid vehicles because more people are going to choose the lower priced vehicle, which in turn will be that pure EV. And then Harriet in the comments had brought up a great point about the fact that, well, while that does play out to be true, we have to remember that Legacy Auto isn't producing EVs, pure EVs, like Tesla is. So this way here, it's actually giving them a crutch because they do have the hybrids that are out there. So they're going to be able to take advantage of that EV tax credit on their hybrids because they're just not producing as many pure EVs as Tesla is, and they're not producing as many pure EVs as they are hybrids. So this really is a crutch. So going back to Tesla being screwed, I'm not going to say that it's a Tesla specific thing. It's more of a pure EV thing. Definitely seems like it's going to be some sort of crutch and bailout for Legacy Auto the way it is currently laid out right now. And the fact that we aren't getting any transparency from the IRS as to why, for instance, the Audi ID4 all-wheel drive qualifies, but the Tesla 5-seat Model Y does not, or why the Model Y 7-seat does and the Model Y 5-seat does not. So I'm waiting to get some clarification on that. I don't know if we're ever going to get transparency for this. If you guys have seen anything about this, please let me know because I didn't see it anywhere in the documentation from the IRS, at least not as of the time of this recording. And now I do want to thank my subscribers over in the EU. Several of you over on Twitter had been sharing what the stock market is looking like over there. Tesla was up 6 to 7% earlier today before those numbers ended up coming out. When the numbers came out, that dropped down by about 5%. So it's still green on the day as of the time of this recording, up about 2%. But it definitely took a big hit on that when the numbers came out. So looking at those numbers there, wondering what we're going to be looking at in the stock price tomorrow when we open, guessing we're going to be coming down. You know, we're in the red shirt because we missed the expectations despite it being a record quarter. And I have a feeling that we are going to be red in the stock price tomorrow. So how far do we come down? Well, we closed at that 123 level, which was right around that 122 support and resistance level. So I have a feeling we are going to be breaking down below that. The support we have below us is the 109 to $110 level. 
I do have a feeling we are going to be testing that level tomorrow and we'll see if we get all the way down there and close at it or not. So from here though, going through Q4 earnings, I'm, I'm just having a gut feeling that we're not gonna get any financial information from Tesla between now and then. And even if they announce a factory, right now the concern is demand and deliveries, not production. So if Tesla announces another factory, people are gonna be like, so what? You're not even able to sell the vehicles you currently have based upon the numbers that we are seeing right now. So again, there's a lot of vehicles in transit. Some are sitting in inventory. We just don't know what those numbers are. Human nature is going to automatically assume it's because Tesla is not selling them. We saw that happen in Q3. So we just need to wait over time to see how this all plays out. But a factory announcement, I don't think is going to help the company move the stock price up anymore. Now, with that said, we do have the CPI and PPI data coming out in a couple of weeks. That may swing the entire market one way or the other. So I think that is the only information we are going to have that could potentially push us and keep us above $100. But if those numbers don't come in where we want them to be, we may end up going sub $100 in the stock price before we get to earnings. And now as Tesla did say, one of the things that you have to pay attention to is the fact that production and delivery numbers are just one of the metrics that they use. So you have to remember that operating margin is separate from vehicle margin. We don't know what vehicle margin is going to be yet. That could in turn bring profits up, despite the fact that with lower deliveries, we are anticipating lower revenue. This is immediately what's going to happen. Everybody is going to take their valuation models out. They are going to be then putting in their numbers for deliveries based upon the numbers that we now currently have. That's automatically going to adjust revenues, profits, and everything else on the numbers that they currently have. That's where all the adjustments are going to come down. So we will end up seeing the stock price coming down accordingly to that. But the factors that we don't have right now are what are those vehicle margins? So perhaps the profits are higher than people anticipated. What are operating margins? Maybe they cut a lot of costs on the bottom line, especially with cutting out these delivery waves, those export costs that they would normally have at the end of the quarter, which could tend to be two or three times what normal delivery rates would be. Maybe those are coming down because they aren't pushing that wave at the end of the quarter. So perhaps operating margins are a little bit higher than anticipated as well. Now, don't forget the Rams for Austin and Berlin. We saw a major bulk of that getting hit in the Q2 earnings. And then that was a little bit lower with the ramp costs in Q3. So here in Q4, we should see significantly lower ramp costs as well getting factored in. That could help operating margins as well. So these are factors that aren't in there right now. Those might still be surprises when we get to Q4 earnings. But from now until then, people don't know, and automatically human nature is going to have us looking at the negative side of things most likely. Now, seeing as I have missed the way I have all year long, being as bullish as I was, I'm definitely getting more skittish with my numbers and tending to be more conservative than I was before. I felt like I was kind of in the middle of everyone when, who was out there. We saw a lot more bullish numbers than mine. I've seen a lot more conservative numbers than mine. I've basically been right in the middle of a lot of people and their estimations out there. I'm most likely going to be sliding more to the conservative side going forward, mostly because of the fact that Elon already has given us that inclination of this year could be a very difficult year with a potential recession coming in. If we do end up getting that, who knows what their decisions are going to be? Elon said they're most likely going to be favoring the side of production and deliveries, get those vehicles produced get them delivered if they need to lower costs and they need to take a hit on margins in order to make that happen. Sounds like that is a move that they will end up making. So my production and delivery numbers are still going to hold steady right now at the 2.1 million produced and the 2 million getting delivered. I may adjust those just waiting to see what they have to say on the Q4 earnings call. But as of right now, I still think that those are achievable. But I think they may end up sliding down if they're just going to try to balance off their margins. You know, they don't want to drop margins down to zero. Elon had alluded to that being a potential opportunity that they could be doing. But there's so many unknowns right now. It's hard to make a decision with all of those unknowns. I'm just playing it out like I did last year, being an agile investor and just kind of watching this as we go and being ready to take advantage of any opportunities we have. Because going back to James's chart, we are still on an almost straight up curve right now when it comes to growth. So despite the fact that the macro environment is holding everything down, and now we're looking at numbers that aren't reaching the numbers that were expected right now, we're going to get back to a point where that does end up happening because I have no doubt everyone is going to start lowering expectations. 
people may start factoring in 40% year over year growth versus 50%. So if we end up coming in with a 42 to 45% growth this year, that could be a surprise beat at the end of the year. A lot of different things, a lot of things to factor out. We'll see how the year plays out. But for me right now, I'm going to scale myself down to a more conservative level of things. So again, the 2 million vehicles getting delivered, I still think is probably on the more bullish side. So I may end up pulling those down to be more conservative. I just have some data that I need to take in before I make those adjustments. And just for a rough estimate of things based upon the 1.31 million vehicles that they just delivered, I think for me, a bear case would be another 40% year over year growth. A base case would be about 42% and a bull case would be about 45% year over year growth for this year coming up. So I'm going to factor those numbers in. And once I update that and all of my valuation model, I'll share that information with you guys. And so again, yep, we did miss those expectations, but we still had that record quarter. So for me, going back to that video where I was saying, you know, is it a hit or a miss? I still consider this a hit, you know, looking at every other legacy automotive maker out there, who else is growing at 40% year over year? Nobody is. So as a matter of fact, most of them have been shrinking. So that is a huge growth, huge step in the right direction. We are still at the beginning, early innings of all of this. We have a long way to go and I'm looking forward to the future growth. And so while to me, I don't consider this to be FUD, this is a realistic number. I still have my shirt, the I love TSLA fudge. And so for me, despite the fact that, you know, this really isn't fear, uncertainty and doubt, I'm still going to grab extra. So I'm going to take a look at where we hit tomorrow with the stock price. I'll probably add a little bit more. And then again, as I said, if we do get down to that $100 level for the stock, I will be dumping about 25% of my cash into the stock at that point. And then I'm just going to monitor to see where we go from there. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications. I am over on Twitter at Oracle Tim one I share all the latest Tesla news, pertinent stock market information, and all of my daily trades. We do have a Discord chat. That link is down in the description. And if you'd like to support the channel any further, we do have a membership program and a Patreon. Those links are also in the description. Thank you so much. Have a great one.